This is a review of episodes 61 through 70 of Hajime no Ippo. This review will contain spoilers for through episode 70, so if you've not seen up until then, then you should not watch this video. This group of episodes was basically all about recovery and second chances. Assuming we go right into the Ippo versus Sendo match at the start of episode 71, then I think that it's been somewhere close to a year since Ippo lost to Date. And I really like the way that time marches on for everyone in the show, because this group of episodes focused a lot on Aoki and Kimura and also furthered Takamura's career as well. And we have seen this evolution in Ippo's personality as well, as he moves away from the little boy lost persona and becomes someone who definitely belongs in this world. Now, in addition to having the skill and the drive, he's upgraded in attitude as well, but he can still be a huge goofball. He kind of said it all when he was talking about how at first it was enough for him to just put on the gloves and do this thing that he really enjoys, boxing. Now he's changed and he realized that he also wants to win as well. I think that that feeling has been there the entire time, he just hasn't realized it because he's been winning constantly, so he thought that that was kind of just the accompanying feeling that goes along with boxing. Now he knows, after he's lost once, that whether or not he's enjoying himself is highly dependent on whether or not he's winning. I think this is a very good thing for Ippo, as he makes his second attempt at the belt in a rematch against Sando. And I think this match really promises to be very exciting. But first I want to talk about his comeback match against Ponchai. I actually feel kind of bad for Ponchai because he did not get the typical Hajime no Ippo treatment where he got a flashback and a reason to fight and made us fall in love with him. He was just this guy who wafted in with zero likability and zero flashbacks and zero inner monologue and then disappeared. I guess he wasn't important beyond being the guy through which Ippo makes his comeback. But then maybe that was good, because it was more about Ippo's comeback than the actual match. It was a, an event that needed to happen. If we had focused on this guy and his sick mom or his need to belong somewhere, then it would have taken the focus away from Ippo coming back into the boxing world. The guy served his purpose, and that's all he was meant to do. He wasn't meant to provide an interesting match against Ippo, really. Aoki and Kimura also got to have their comeback matches as well, and I think it was really cool the way they distinguished between their different reasons for fighting. Aoki's motivation was to fight for his girlfriend, and not only to impress her, but to fulfill this instinctual manly need to protect a woman too. I love his girlfriend because they're kind of perfect for each other in every way, and it makes it even that much better that she's so supportive and so ugly. And then we got Kimura's match, and he found out right before his match that his girlfriend was not actually his girlfriend, but in fact just a really good female friend. He fought as someone with nothing to lose, and I really appreciated this because it led us into an amazing flashback. I didn't realize how close in age Ippo was to Aoki and Kimura. I guess they're only like one or two years apart. Knowing that they were shitheads in their past, and that Kimura had a pompadour, just makes them that much more lovable. I like that their goal was originally to just punch Takamura in the face, but then they came to really love boxing and started getting good at it. It's kind of glorious that Takamura is also the catalyst for getting them into the gym as well, just like Ippo, even though the reasons behind it was very different. And I loved it when baby Miata showed up and he's standing among all of these shitheads with his little sweater around his neck and they're all trying to channel their frustration and he's just like, I was raised to be a boxer. <laughs> I'm a sucker for shitheads and also a sucker for flashbacks when they're done right. And this was done right. A few reviews back, I remember talking about how we don't have origin stories for most of the main characters and I did feel as though it wasn't completely necessary to have those stories either. If we hadn't gotten that flashback, then it wouldn't have been a problem. But the fact that we did get it was more of just a treat than anything else. They're still the same characters, we just have different feelings about them. And it's especially good because all of them, Takamura, Aoki, Kimura, they're all embarking on a more serious route in their careers. And then all of this perfectly guided us into the Training in the Mountains group of episodes. Um, where we met the coach's old friend, Nikota. And yeah, everyone trained in all that, but 
Takamura fought a bear. He fought a bear, and he defeated it with very minimal harm. He came to the camp saying that he wanted to fight a bear, and then he fought a bear, and then he won. Then he spared the bear. Then he ate the bear. Then he wore the bear's pelt to a boxing match and challenged the world. Coach was pretty funny when he said that he wanted to scold Takamura for being so ridiculous, but he couldn't really do that because he had just defeated his opponent so cleanly and so gloriously. It's hard to scold someone who fights a bear and wins. But Takamura's next goal is to take on the world. He's proven that he's much too good for such a small country like Japan and he has to go and find a larger audience. And all the while, Ippo is still working towards his own goal and combining offense and defense and sort of created this new technique called the Dempsey Roll. Of course, he wasn't the first person to ever think of it, hence the name Dempsey Roll, but I think it's pretty cool that he was able to devise this technique on his own without knowing that it was already a famous technique. And I think it does fit Ippo's style very well because it takes away one of his biggest flaws as a boxer, in my opinion, which was that his guard was just so basic. Apparently it's not going to work against Sendo, though, and those two are just single-mindedly focused on one another. Sendo has undergone a very dramatic evolution since his last fight with Ippo. He was always kind of wild and super fierce, and now he's found a way to channel that into his boxing in a very effective way. I think the biggest change, which will be the biggest problem for Ippo, is the fact that he has this new dashing ability, which he's been working on just non-stop by always wearing weights. And it's really hard for me because I really liked Sendo when we first met him in All Through the Arc where Ippo was fighting him, but recently he's made me a little nervous. He's coming across as more of like a ruthless killer than a defender of the weak, which is what he originally set out to become. After we saw his flashback, we learned a lot about him, and that he did originally want to become just a defender of the week, but he didn't really know how to do it, and so now he's doing boxing, and I think that confusion is still there. How can you possibly not like this kid after seeing his flashback with his super heroic fireman dad and his strength, and then he grows up protecting people, and then he becomes a shithead? It's no wonder boxing is so popular among shitheads. It seems like most of them have shithead roots. The thing that really makes me tense, though, is what happened during his fight with Shigeta. There were points uh, in the match when I definitely thought that Shigeta in his southpaw style was going to become the new overall opponent for Ippo to take the belt. And it kind of seemed like a good message for Sendo, who didn't bother doing any preparation for specifically thinking up a technique to go against Shigeta. But then Sendo snapped and he went so hardcore against Shigeta that he might have ended his career. To be fair, Shigeta was being a smug asshole, but when you have someone up against the ropes and they're obviously already unconscious, you have to exercise some restraint. Sendo doesn't really have any restraint, and that's what's very troubling about him. But everyone wants a little bit of Ippo these days, so let's just switch gears and start talking about Kumi. Clearly, she wants the D. It's just too bad that they're both so awkward and so perfect for each other that it's difficult to get this relationship off the ground. Thankfully, Kumi has bigger balls than Ippo. Figuratively speaking, of course, because as we've already established, Ippo's dick is huge. So, um, of course she couldn't possibly have bigger balls than him. Oh, guys, it's the last review of Hajime no Ippo, so I'll give you what you all came for, and that's more Ippo's dick is big jokes. Ippo's dick is so big that he has a built-in kickstand for when his legs get tired. Ippo's dick is so big that the tickets are already sold out. Ippo's dick is so big that if he entered a big dick contest, then he'd come in first, second, and third. Ippo's dick is so big that scientists have begun to speculate that it is perhaps a major factor contributing to global warming and sea level rise. Wait, I think that one may have been just a bit too long and convoluted. Just like Ippo's dick. All that aside, this show, despite its length, has been a very fun ride. Just like Ippo's dick. No, but seriously, I am almost at the end of this show. There's only about six episodes left to go. Just like Ippo's dick. 
But anyway, I'm going to watch the last six episodes as two triple features, even though I think episode 76 is kind of a throwaway. So my next Hajime no Ippo video will be a watching of episodes 71, 72, and 73. And I have a feeling that this show is going to come to an amazing climax and explode like a volcano. Just like Ippo's dick. <laughs> oh, I had another great joke about Ippo's dick, but it was just too long. <laughs> Bye! <laughs>